Okay, rational limits. If you've been waiting for limits to get harder, the wait is over. Well, it's almost over. This last example is a pushover, but after this, things start to heat up. They give us a limit, x plus 5 over x plus 7, and ask us how it behaves when x is negative 5. So, first thing we try is just put in negative 5 for x. We get negative 5 plus 5 over negative 5 plus 7, which is 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So, okay, that wasn't too exciting. But the second part of this is they give us the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. You see what's going to happen? Here's what happens. We get x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 equals 9 minus 9 over 3 minus 3 equals 0 over 0 equals undefined, not good. When people talk about limits, this is the kind of thing that they probably have in mind, because this is where most of the work with limits comes up. You get an expression, you try to plug in the limit value, and it doesn't work. You can't even evaluate it. And the question becomes, is there any way I can fix this so I can evaluate it? And the answer often comes down to factoring. The problem with this expression, the reason this isn't working, is that our denominator is coming out to 0, meaning this x minus 3 is the problem. If we could cancel that somehow, we'd be in good shape. And we can cancel it because, look, this numerator is a difference of squares. We can pull that apart, and when we do, something great happens. That's not the great part. This is. You see our salvation there? We have x minus 3 twice, therefore we can cancel the x minus 3s. And this says the function x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 behaves just like plain old x plus 3. Almost always, these two terms generate the exact same number, and so they're canceling out. And this one is actually doing all the work. When x is 1, this is producing 1 plus 3, which makes perfect sense. These are doing something that cancels. When x is 10, you get 13 out of these, and these do something that cancels. When x is 100, you get 103 here, and these two cancel. These two are constantly just neutralizing each other, except when x gets to 3. At exactly 3, we get this 0 over 0 problem, and these don't cancel. They actually blow up the function, and it's impossible to evaluate. But every place else, we can say, basically, this function behaves like x plus 3. So now, if we try to plug our limit value in again, we get 3 plus 3. It's perfectly well behaved now. We can say the limit as we approach 3 is 6. Now, if you actually graph this, you'll find it does behave like x plus 3. I mean, if you graph this original, x squared minus 9 over x minus 3, you'll see it behaves exactly like x plus 3 all the way along here, except for a tiny hiccup and then it carries on behaving like x plus 3. This hiccup is the point 3 comma 6. That's the one point where this expression is actually undefined. It becomes 0 over 0, and you can't cancel that out. You can't just say, scratch out the zeros and let's see what's left. You can take a limit there and see if that point existed, it would be at 6, but that point doesn't actually exist. It's actually what we call a point discontinuity. So limits let us figure out what the function was about to do just before it winked out of existence here because it was undefined. <laughs>